All right, example eight. Uh, these make great stocking stuffers and multiple choice question on your test. Hey, when is your test? Thursday, right? A week from today, not today. That might explain why so many people are absent. They thought it was today. Right. Or there's like a basketball tournament going on. And some Yeah, yep. Okay. Um <clears throat> kind of soupy out there. So this one says if the natural log of two is what is this? What the heck does that mean? Almost, yeah, almost around approximately, yeah, is estimated by. Thank you. Yeah, um, it's like an equal sign that has been like primped in the morning with the hair dryer, right? There you go. Now you got the waves working, baby. So that is the approximation symbol, but of course, you've probably heard me call it something else before. Squiggles. And you have to say it like that. Squiggles. Squiggles, squiggles, squiggles. In fact, someone asked me yesterday why I was hanging trash up on my board over there. Was that someone in here? It was kind of disrespectful just to just be so blunt about it. Okay, to be trash, it has to have actually gone into the trash can and then pulled back out. If it's just left over from use, it's not trash. Okay? If you look over there, the old trolley sour patch worms, they're called what? Squiggles. So that's why uh, some student preserved that and gave it to me. They didn't like dumpster dive and get it. And, and yeah. but the cookie next to it, the pie cookie, that's disgusting. It's twelve years twelve years old. Twelve years old. Uh huh. It was a lot wider twelve years ago. It's a little kind of gotten a little jaundiced. Yeah, it's yellowish. Uh huh. Anyway, squiggles. That means the natural log of two is approximately 0.7. It's actually closer to 0 0.693 dot, dot, dot. We'll talk about that a little bit more. But assuming that we don't have a calculator and we know that the natural log of 2 is about 0 0.7, it says to evaluate the following. Okay. So I want to know then what the natural log of 8 is approximately. When all you've got is a hammer, you've got to make everything look like a what? A nail. Right. And so all we have is the natural log of 2, so I need to try to make everything look like the natural log of 2, right? Um, so how can I rewrite the 8 in terms of 2? Anyone? Yeah, 2 to the power of 3, that's good. And then using uh, another property, what can I do with the power of 3? Move it to the front. So that's 3 times the natural log of 2. And now, now I can make a substitution. But you want to be careful here with your notation. Notice if you're working straight down without any equal signs, everything is implied to be equivalent, right? In other words, there's like implied equal signs here. We are going to make a replacement with something that is only approximately. So now we would want to say this is approximated by, and we're just going to substitute the natural log of 2 with 0 0.7. And now we can multiply that together. You can work straight down now, and you get 2.1. 2.1. Uh, no, actually, when you put the approximation symbol, you only put it there one time. You actually don't put it each and every time. Because what is 3 times 0. 0.7? Is it approximately 2.1? No, 3 times 0. 0.7 equals 2.1. So you don't continue to put the squiggles. Um, it's just there that first time when you make the replacement. Now, does anyone have a calculator Medor in front of them? Yeah, I don't either. Let's see. Uh, I wasn't prepared today. Okay, here's one. See, Mr. Johnson coming through again. We're going to miss him. We're going to miss him. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to type it in. I know you're curious. Uh, the natural log of 2.1 is, let's come over here. Oh, I'm sorry, the natural, what am I doing? I'm, I'm still, Mr. Johnson made me breakfast this morning, and it was so delicious. I can't get it. I, I keep thinking about it. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. He made it. He got. He got up early and made an egg casserole. His first one ever. Ooh. Yeah, it was. It was good. Mr. Bowen had some of it, and he went back for seconds. I saw him on the way out. So I mean, that's. There's no better uh, compliment to a chef than when you go back for seconds or thirds, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, 
This, by the way, in the teaching business is called, Mr. Johnson, what? Come on. Starts with a P and rhymes with rock city. Huh? No, no. Proximity. Proximity. Yeah. Okay. So, in case you're wondering, the natural log of eight is, yeah, yeah, when you go to teacher school, they teach you all of these terms. Yeah. And so, proximity is one of those things that they teach teachers. What's that? Well, power zone is when you move around to be like, hey, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? Right? But proximity is like there's a student who is venturing off task, and all you do is you move into their zone of proximal development. That's a geography term. Yeah, and then they, they feel... They actually feel the warmth of the teacher's aura, right, around them, and they, they, they get back on. It's a real subtle thing. I mean, you don't even have to talk about it. You just, you just move over. And so, you know, you pointed out, you know, and, and, the, and the beauty of the iPad is you can do that now. Right, right, right. Yeah, right, right. So that's called proximity. Um, anyway, the natural log of 8 is 2.07944. Now, notice that I did cut off some decimals. But when we report accurate decimals, uh, we don't need to put the squiggles anymore, okay? So uh, how close is that, 2.07 to 2.1? It's close enough, right? It's close enough. As, as, um, as my old boss said back in the day, it's good enough for the girls I go out with. Wow. Um, that was more of a slant. Don't take that the wrong way, guys. Let's think about what do you mean by that. That's good enough for the girls I go out with. Is that a slam on him or the girls he goes out with? Kind of both. Yeah, kind of both. Um, kind of both. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, maybe they just weren't that picky. We were cabinet makers, by the way. So um, it was kind of like a tongue-in-cheek joke. Because in cabinetry, you have to have very high tolerances. Everything has to be within, you know, 64th or 128th of an inch, even smaller than that. So... You know, when you're off by a tenth or so, it's kind of, he just choked around. Ah, it's good enough for the girls I go out with. And he was married. So, <laughs> anyway, um, I don't know how we get so off task, but I guess so. Yeah, I mean, we still learn, right? Yeah, okay. Letter B on your market set, you go. You do it. What'd y'all get? Y'all didn't get negative 1.38629 did y'all? No, no, that's what the calculator got. Uh, and that's not even the exact answer. There's many more decimals behind that. Uh, if you take BC Calculus next year, we'll talk about how the calculator comes up with that number. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's by using what's called a Taylor polynomial. Okay, um, it doesn't actually take the natural log at all when it gets that number. It's pretty interesting. If you remember yesterday, I told you that computer programs would rather do many, many more calculations with smaller numbers than big, one, fewer calculations with bigger numbers. Taylor polynomials allow you to do that. You can have as many terms as you want to be as accurate as you need to, and it's just a plug and chug problem instead of trying to figure out what a natural log is. But again, that's my plug for taking BC calculus next year. Um, we need to be able to write one fourth as a power of two, right? So let's see if we can do it just in one fell swoop here. One fourth is the same as two to the what? Negative two power, right? 
Good, because it's 1 over 2 squared. Bring it to the top. It becomes negative. And then the negative 2 can come out front, and we got negative 2 natural log of 2. Sweet. Now that I have it as the natural log of 2, I can substitute in, and I can say that that's approximately negative 2 times 0 0.7, which is negative 1.4. Thank you. Okay, we'll send him um, seven minutes ago. Okay. Ah, okay, negative 1.4. How close is that to negative 1.38? Good enough for the girls that my old cabinet-making boss went out with. Yeah, yeah. Ha, um, ha, funny, funny. I think his wife was much more picky. I know mine is. Um, Tristan, it says that you were supposed to have a junior conference uh, seven minutes ago um, with Miss Nasser. Um, I don't know if you want to just run down there and tell her that you're learning math. Um, yeah, I would probably take your stuff. Um, you could, as you can see, I'm recording the lesson, so you can you can watch it later and get all the the jokes and stories about inappropriate people. Yeah. Okay. Um, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> math classes should be exempt from like those types of meetings. All right, the natural log of the square root of 2. Let's do this one together really, really fast, okay? <clears throat> That's the same as the natural log of 2 to the 1 power. 1 half, good. Where does 1 half go? It goes out front. Does it always have to come over the top and into the front? No, it can go under the bottom and out to the front. 1 half natural log of 2. Hey, you know what? Does it even have to go out in front? No, because multiplication is commutative. So if you want, you can just pretend that the 1 half gets tired of hanging on in the exponent and uh, it falls to the floor. Boom. Okay, it just falls down. Now, if you write it like that, you have to be careful because that really appears to be the natural log of what? One. Two times a half. In other words, that appears to be this. Is that really what it is? Yeah. No. So that's not the best way to do it, right? So hang in there, little one half. Don't just fall down unless you're going to put parentheses around one or the other or both, okay? Okay, cool. So what is the natural log of two then? 0.7. So we're taking one half of 0.7. And if you have 70 cents and someone takes half of it, they leave you with as much as they took. 0.35, sharing is caring. You both have 35 cents now. Okay? Which could buy each of you back in the day one go at the Frogger Arcade. Right? Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah. With 20 cents left over betwixt the two of you. All right. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I guess we can type it in and see what it's actually equal to. But you know it's going to be close. Okay. I thought that was the last one. So. That was the penultimate one. Here's the ultimate one. Log base 4 of the square root of 8. We have to be able to write that as, as a what? Not just, not just in terms of 2, but we need to be able to write it in terms of natural log of 2. And right here, we don't even have log base E. Very good. Excellent. Well done. Super job. Change the base formula. Everyone remembers what that is, right, and how to use it? Okay. So that's going to be the natural log over the natural log. Is it square root of 8 over 4 or 4 over the square root of 8? Square root of 8 over 4. Good. Base is on the bottom. B -b 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 Base. Right? There, you got it. Good. And it's also a subscript, which is written a little bit lower, just like a denominator is written a little bit lower. Okay. Now, um, you could do that because that is just using the change of base. That's not doing anything to the arguments of the base itself. I know some of y'all like to do like five things in one step, right? Especially if we're quizzing. Let's see if we can write it now in terms of base two. So eight is the same as, square root of eight, sorry, is the same as two to the what? Third halves. Excellent, right? Remember the square root gives us the one half exponent and eight is two cubed. So you should be able to look at the square root of eight and say it's two to the three halves. Okay, and then, of course, in the bottom, we get the natural log of 4, which is 2 squared. All right, so I need another column here. And now the 3 halves can come up front, so we get 3 halves natural log of 2 all over 2 natural log of 2. Hey, do I need to replace natural log of 2 with 0.7? No. Why? Why not? Y'all are so good. No one said cancel. If this was like the first three weeks of school, everyone would cancel! They cancel! Right? And I would have been like, no, they don't. And then, and then you're like, that's what my teacher told us. But no one's saying that today. 
everyone's saying, it's fine. If you're not in the math environment, like if you're in aisle seven at the HEB and you're like, yeah, they canceled. They're going to be like, I know what you mean, right? But there's no math police around, so it's okay. But when the math police are here, that's Mr. Johnson. So I guess after today, no, that's not what that means. They divide out. So on the next line, do I need to put the squiggles? No, because now we're not finding an approximate answer. We're finding an, a, an answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what is three halves halves? Is it three? Because this is where people like trip and fall flat on their faces. They're like, oh, three halves halves. The twos divide out. Three. Yeah, it's three fourths, right? Good. You're taking half of three halves. Half of three halves is three fourths. Or you can put the two over one and do stay, change, flip, right? So when in doubt, don't be in doubt. Do something to work it out. Sometimes from the inside out, sometimes from the outside in, okay? There you go. Three-fourths. It's actually equal to three-fourths. All right, sweet. Now, that's not the only way to, that we could have done that one, but that's how we did it. Okay, sweet. Um, comments or questions on that? No. Okay. Uh, let's look at an example of log functions. When we started logs, I told you all logs are used in many, many, many different models uh, to model scientific things, social scientific things. Um, earth scientific things, biological sciences, light intensity, seismograph, earthquake measures, um, pH tests, right? If you all have had chemistry, you know that the pH between the hydroxide ion and the hydrogen ion, is a, it's a log scale, right? Um, well, here's another application of logs. Anyone have uh, Mr. Um, 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 Kilford, Coach Kilford? Yeah, okay, good. So you probably know about Ebbinghaus's law because it comes up in psychology. Oh, oh, you haven't had, okay, you're in sociology. Yeah, well, in psychology, there's something called Ebbinghaus's Law, and it was named after this German dude, Hermann, Hermann Ebbinghaus. That is German right there. Um, he lived from 1850 to about 1870. That's when he was really living the first 20 years of his life. Uh, after that, for the other uh, 39 years, he was just enduring. So try not to be like Ebbinghaus. Try to live your full life, not just half of it. <laughs> it's supposed to be inspirational. <laughs> All right. Good thing I'm the only one drinking the rest of my coffee that now has spit in it. Yeah, it goes dunk the cookie. Okay. Anyway, here, here's uh, – whoa. Okay. Uh, let's read. Log functions are used to model a variety of situations involving human behavior. Yep, yep. Um, I'm sure there is a, there is a jewel log equation somewhere. Um, one such behavior is how quickly we forget things that we have learned, okay? For example, has anyone um, heard of Ebbinghaus and Kilford's? <laughs> For example, if you learn math at a certain performance level, let's say next Thursday you make a 90% on the test, just hypothetically, right? Go ahead and just say I'm going to score lower than 100 just for the sake of argument here. You're going to get a 90 on the test. What if then you never review those skills that we test on next Thursday for a, for a long while. You don't go home and review it every night. In fact, you don't go home and review it at all. It doesn't even cross your mind. You learned it once to a 90% mastery level, and then you don't use it again for a while. The question is, how much will you retain after a week, a month, a year, two years, whatever, after a certain amount of time? Well, Ebbinghaus came up with an equation that can be modeled uh, or that can model that, that uh, phenomenon. Okay? So here's what Ebbinghaus's law says. It says, uh, if, if a task is learned at a performance level, P sub O. So P is for, for, per, for, yeah, C is for cookie, and P is for performance at time zero. That's the original performance. Then after time P, the performance level P satisfies this log equation. Log of P equals log of P sub O minus C log of T sub 1. So P is your performance performance uh, after T, we'll use years here, okay? I didn't define the unit in the question. So P sub O is your original performance, T is the time in years, T is your performance after T years, and C is going to be some constant that's associated with the particular task, like uh, learning to spell your name versus like learning to water ski versus learning to ride a bike or something, right? <clears throat> or learning to forget things that you want to suppress, right? 
Okay. Solve for P. Solve for P. Okay, solve for P. Good. So this is, a, this is what we call a formula or a literal equation. Literal literally means by the letter. So that's another name for a formula. It's a literal equation. And we can manipulate symbols in an equation to solve for any particular variable that we want. We want to solve for P because then we'll have P as a function of time. That way we can plug in different values of time and just go right to the performance after T years. So what should I do first in order to solve for P? Think about anything we've been doing in the last, uh, I don't know, 20 minutes or yesterday, the last week. What? Look at the right side. We have log minus log. Condense, anyone? Condense? Hey, yeah, let's do that. So that's log base what of P? What's the base here? 10, right? Scientists like to use base 10. Now, Evan House was a social scientist, but that still counts, right? Just like punters are real football players. <laughs> okay. Um, they are. They are. They wear the pads and the helmet and everything. Um, so we bring the C up first, and then we can do what? Pull out a log, and we have a negative term, so there's the shell, and we get P sub O over the quantity T sub 1 to the Cth power. All right, so now how do we solve for P? How do we unlog base 10 it? What is the inverse of logging base 10? Exponentiating base 10. So we can say 10 to the power of, 10 to the power of, and on the left, what's 10 to the log base 10 of P? P, right? And do each other. That's that rule that says they're inverses. What On the right, we get 10 to the log base 10 of blob. What's 10 to the log base 10 of blob? Blob. So that's P sub O over T plus 1 to the Cth power. So this is an equivalent equation that you can use. It's just solve for P as a function of T. You don't see any logs in it, but it is exponential when, when, in terms of C. So any exponential function will also be a log function. Okay? So that makes it easier to use. Now, uh, let's use it on part B. If your math score was a 90 originally, what score would you expect to get on a similar test after two months after a year? Actually, let's do T in, let's not do years. Let's do T in months. That just makes it a little bit easier for us. Okay? T in months. All right, so let's go ahead and plug in now, make it specific for the task at hand. It says to assume that C is 0 0.2. So the performance is, what's our P sub O? Yeah, this is how you use formulas, right? Like in physics, you just plug in what you have. So we get 90 over T plus 1 to the 0 0.2th power. Now, y'all don't have a calculator, so I'll do this for y'all. Um, but we're going to plug in a what now for T? If we're measuring it in months, after two months, right? So let's do P of 2, like F of X. It's 90 over. We'll plug in a 2 for T, and we get 2 plus 1. That's 3 to the 0 0.2 power. Okay. According to Ebbinghaus, you take a test two months later. It's almost like taking your final exam without studying for the final, right? Yeah. <laughs> what? Just anyone have a guess what you think your score would be on the test, according to Ebbinghaus? Oh, you think, you think it's going to be a higher score because over time, without any rehearsal or practice, it just ages, like, ages to perfection, like cheese or wine or kids' wine. No, I was going to say, like, wives. But that's, a, that's supposed to be a compliment, yeah. Uh, I think husbands kind of get stupider as marriages go on, but, but the wives just, they, they, they get better and better. And Mr. Johnson can attest to that. Yeah, yeah. Guys, you're going to be lost without a woman later in life, I promise. 72.246, uh, okay? You get a 72. Dollars, you said you were going to fail. Um, almost, man. You almost met your goal. Yeah, if you could have just, like, scored poor on the first test or maybe given it a couple more days, you might have reached your goal of failing. But you're still passing. Okay? Oh. 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 <laughs> okay. So, yeah, yeah. So 20 years later without rehearsing, Mr. Johnson got a what? Got a 30. So 
there's something to look forward to, right? If you never study logs again the rest of your life after this year, 20 years after high school, if you were sitting down for a log test, you'd still make a 30. And you might be pretty proud of that number. Okay. Um, I'm not going to do this, but what if we waited a full year? What would we plug in for uh, T? A full year? Yeah, if we're measuring T in, in <laughs> yeah. I wish there were six, uh, <laughs> never mind, Tw six months in a year. The, the years will go by faster, right? Like twice as fast. Y'all be, y'all be, uh, yeah, you'd be old already. Okay, so you're going to get a score that's probably what? Higher or lower? Probably lower, yeah. So if you plug that in, that's going to be 90 over 13 to the 0 0.2 power. And I'll go ahead and do that right here for y'all so y'all don't have to uh, guess, but oof, oof, 53.883, okay? You still know more than half, but they really say that education is what remains after you're done with school, okay? So according to Ebbinghaus, you know, it, 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 it devalues as soon as you quit learning. If you forgot it, you never really learned it to begin with, in other words. And that's what Ebbinghaus is saying. Uh, if you waited uh, a million years, you might you might get a zero on the test, right? Simply because there's no way to take it, right? Yeah, you're you're a bag of bones, and they don't take tests very well. Okay, but you know what I mean. It approaches zero over time. Yeah. Okay. One last question. Any any questions before we do the one the last example? So good so far, right? All right. Example ten is my favorite example. We can use the change of base formula to write equivalent equations of the same logarithmic function, okay? I told you that your calculator can accept logs of any base without using the change of base formula, but that we were going to use it for another reason, and this is that reason. So it says, describe how the graph of log base one-half of x can be transformed to become the graph of g of x equals log base six of x. Okay, so let's see what that means. We are starting with log base one-half of x. What, what do we know about that function? Well, we know in this case that it's blue. I mean, you do it in blue. It has a vertical asymptote on the y-axis, and it crosses the x-axis at what point? Not 0, 1, but 1, 0, yeah. And is it log growth or log decay? If the base is less than 1, it's decay. So it's going to look something like that. Okay, so what I want to do is manipulate that through a sequence of transformations, right? Flip, flip, stretch, compress, shift, whatever, in order to turn it into this guy, log base 6 of x. Now, log base 6 of x, I'll do it in red. He's going to also have a vertical asymptote on the y-axis, and he's also going to pass through the point 1, 0. So we're probably not going to have to do any shifting, right? But 6, base 6 is what? Growth or decay? It's going to be growth. Yeah, growth. Now is, so it's going to have to at least be, hey, he's back. Did you get your iPad? Nice. We know for sure then that we're going to have to do what to the blue graph to get the red graph? For sure. Flip it across the x-axis. Yeah, so we know our a value is going to have to be what type of number? Negative. But a, a, a steepness level, I should say, or an aperture of, of 2 versus 6, they're going to be different, right? They're going to be different. If you just took the log base 1 half and you flipped it and it became log base 2, remember for logs, the what are the base, the, the steeper the graph. For logs, the what of the base, the steep of the graph? Smaller, right? So if this is log base 1 half of x, if I flip that across, it's going to become log base 2 of x, and it should be steeper. So it should look something like, um, oof, yeah, it'll look like this. That should be log base 2 of x, and then it should look like that. So not only am I going to have to reflect it across the x-axis, but then I'm going to have to do what to make it conform to the red? Stretch it or compress it? I'm probably going to have to compress it, yeah. So I'm looking for this. I know then 
that if I want to end up with log base 6 of x, all I have to do is take some a value and multiply it by log base 1 half of x. And I know that A is going to be um, less than zero, because I have to flip it. And I also know that the magnitude of A, because I have to compress it, is going to be between zero and one. Would you all agree? Okay, so notice what I did on the right, because that, that makes it easy. If you always set it up like that, you'll have your template. It's always going to be capital A, because that takes care of our reflections across the x-axis and our vertical dilation times the one that you start with, okay? This is the one that we're starting with, and then we set it equal to the one that we want to end with. Okay, cool. So now, what can I do? I need to solve for A. Well, what do you notice about the bases of the two logs that we have? They're different, right? So what I would probably do is start off by putting them all in terms of the same base, and which base should we choose if we have no preference? In other words, what should our preference be? Are we social scientists or scientists? Not in this class. Natural laws. Natural laws, yeah. I mean, it wouldn't be bad to use base 10. That would be totally fine. I wouldn't count off any points at all. But let's try and use the uh, natural base in here, uh, unless we're working uh, an imported science application. So that's going to be the natural log of x divided by the natural log of a half, and that's going to equal the natural log of x over the natural log of 6. All right. That changes all the apples and oranges to peaches, right? So now we have the same fruit. Now how do I solve for A? If we have a fraction and I need to get rid of it, all I have to do is multiply both sides by the what of that? Starts with R and rhymes with uh, pretriprical. Reciprocal, yeah. Y'all are really good at taking hints. Yeah, su real subtle hints, yeah. Okay, so I showed that. I showed that I'm multiplying both sides by the reciprocal. And when you do that, you get to make the sound effect on the left, right? And you're left with A. What, did, what happened on the left? Everything what did? Divided out. Excellent. Now, does anything divide out on the right? The variable parts did. Oh, thank goodness. Whew. I'm glad that they divided out because I was hoping A was going to be some number, Right? between negative 1 and 0. All right, so I'm left with natural log of a half over the natural log of 6. And that could be a final answer. But if this were a multiple choice question, do you think that that would be an answer choice? No, because it looks kind of complex because it has a fraction inside of a fraction. So what could we do with the 1 half in the numerator? There's a couple of different things we could do with it. This is like playing, playing with the answer at the end of it. Logs are fun to play with, right? They actually sell them at Toys R Us. Oh, my bad, sorry. Too soon. Uh, on Amazon. Lincoln Logs. They sell Lincoln Logs, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The boys grew up playing, or I did, right, with Lincoln Logs. Yeah, so it's fun to play with logs, right? So you should develop the habit of playing with your logs at the end. All right. So what can we call natural log of a half? Using the properties. Come on, it's the log of a quotient. Anyone, anyone? It becomes the natural log of the numerator minus the natural log of the denominator. Yes, yes, no, no. Yes, 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 yes. And I called it natural log on the left. Why? I don't know. Okay, there it's A. Yeah, I know, that probably confused you. All right, now, look at the first term in the numerator. It's the natural log of 1. What is the natural log of 1? Zero. So 0 minus the natural log of 2 is negative natural log of 2 over the natural log of 6. Sweet. Can we do anything else with that? Well, without a calculator, we can. Because we know that we can write 6 as what times what? 2 times 3. Right. And so now using property 1, I can call that negative natural log of 2 over... The natural log of 2, what? Yes, you do. Multiplication becomes what? Addition, yes. Would that be worth doing if we do that? Can the natural log of 2s divide out? 
No, they can't because they are not f- f- freaking factors, right? They're terms, and we can't divide our common terms. So we can't do anything else with that, but that's just another look. So which one might I have typed up as a test question answer? Maybe this one or maybe that one. Yeah, that's right. So learn to play with your logs, right? Um, now, real quickly here, there's another way to get negative natural log of 2 other than using property 1, okay? Because the natural log of 1 half by the rules of exponent is the same as the natural log of 2 to the what power? Negative 1 power. Now, using property 3, we get negative natural log of 2. So if you saw it that way, you get the same answer. And then for what it's worth, I'll go ahead and type it in here on Mr. Johnson's calculator. The negative natural log of 2, close parentheses, divided by the natural log of 6. We get that to be uh, equal to 0, oops, sorry, negative, right? Negative 0 0.386. Is that the type of number we are anticipating? No. Well, let's go back over here. And we were looking for a negative number, right? Because it had to reflect across the x-axis. Is this a negative number? Yes. We wanted its magnitude, which is 0 0.386. We wanted it to be a vertical compression. And in order to convert, uh, compress vertically, we needed the absolute value of A to be between 0 and 1. Is the magnitude 0 0.386 between 0 and 1? Yes. Yes, it is. Okay? So, uh, so now you could say, so... Um, Log base 6 of x is actually equal to, I'll use this version, okay? It's actually a little nicer in my mind. It's negative natural log of 2 over the natural log of 6 times log base, what did we start with? 1 half of x. And so this, this would be our value of a. That's the exact value of a. Oh, I know what else I want to talk about. Now nah, that's good. Does the negative in the top have to be with the natural log of 2, or can it go to the bottom? Hey, you're back. Good, good. Thank you. No, if you have a negative ratio, the negative could be associated with the top or the bottom. So that's either the natural log of 2 over the negative natural log of 6, or negative natural log of 2 over the natural log of 6, or... Remember, this is the way I probably would not recommend it, but this is the way I would type it. The negative can come perfectly out front, perfectly out front on the same level as your division bar. Okay? And that means that the whole ratio is negative. Whole ratio. All right. Y'all can do that, right? No big deal. So I talked to you through why it works, but really for those of y'all just looking for what do I do, what do I do, what do we do? You put A in front of your starting equation, and you set it equal to your ending equation, right? Put everything in terms of base E or base 10, and then solve for A, okay? And then play with it at the end. All right, that concludes the lesson. Where do you, where do you go to practice ones like this? Corpy's World, that's right. Okay, so um, probably will not quiz tomorrow, but we will probably move into the next section tomorrow, solving logarithmic equations. All right. Yay. Yay, yay. And remember, that's the last section that we're going to cover before our test next Thursday.